Good morning, everybody. My name is Panos Katsampanis, live from uh, the European Business Summit 2015. We are situated at the European Think Pavilion, and we have the profound pleasure to meet with uh, Joanna Nyman, uh, President of the European Youth Forum. Hello, Joanna. Uh, good morning, and uh, what do you think about European Business Summit this year? Well, good morning. I think it's very interesting to be here. We have been here talking about quality internships, and it's really nice to interact with businesses on this important topic. Uh, very well. So we, we have prepared some questions for you today. Uh, they reflect uh, some of the biggest worries of uh, European youth. And uh, without further ado, I will start with the first one. Uh, you just finished the uh, Meet the Expert session right here at TBS 2015 with the topic quality internships, what business can do. So let me start this interview with the same question. What do European business really do for quality internships? and what they don't do at the end of the day. It varies a lot between businesses. Some businesses provide really good quality internships where there's a clear learning content of the internship, where there's remuneration, and where it's clear to all parties what the internship is about. Others don't. Some provide internships that are unpaid for a very long time without any kind of learning content. So it's really from here to here. And how do you plan to bridge this gap? Well, we're working with businesses and we are also advocating and making sure that politicians also react to this situation. We have to have an end to unpaid internships. This is not acceptable. You know, this is a very big issue. Uh, even though some people, they think it's a prestige to work for an organization, even unpaid. How would you see that? How do you feel about that? Well, I think it really reflects the employment situation today in Europe. Young people are pre prepared to do anything because, because our possibilities are very limited at this moment. Right. right. Uh, things are very tough. And I hope with your work, guys, you make it better. Uh, the, the, I continue with the next question. Um, so yesterday, the annual YoFest 2015, a great event that you do every year in Brussels, it took also this year place uh, in uh, Place Luxembourg. Uh, what was this year's focus, actually? What are the highlights you would like to discuss with us? And why is the Face so important for the Forum and the European Youth? Well, I'm going to start from then. The Face is extremely important because we have it outside the European Parliament. Young people reclaiming the political space in Europe. But also we're linking together politics and fun and we're linking together youth activists and decision makers. So that is really the key to us to bridge all of these things so we can really have an impact on the European politics. This year's team, it was brought together and we really want to have a broad aspect of development, showing that young people can also be a positive force in Europe today. Not only a problem, not only the ones we talk in bad terms about, but we can really be a part of building society. It's mostly, it has a symbolic character, let's say, but also do you have some interesting, let's say, effective uh, actions there or discussions that influence actually European policy making? Yeah, we had a whole set of different seminars and debates throughout the day. So, for example, we were discussing youth participation and also having politicians attending, discussing with us how can we make politics more access uh, accessible for young people. We also have a, had a couple of sessions on employment questions. We also had the commissioner visiting and really tried to bridge this gap between young people and decision makers through having concrete events about political topics that are relevant to young people today. Well, that's very exciting, it sounds. Um, I continue with the next one uh, today. Uh, Juncker's investment plan is a topic. Uh, it amounts to more than 300 billion euros. Uh, how much from that do you believe is in for European youth? How important priority is European youth for this commission? And how much investment, most of all, will it really put in order to tackle all major youth issues in Europe? Would it be enough in the end of the day? Well, it's a lot of money and we hope that a huge part of it will go to young people, to young entrepreneurs and to make sure that uh, there is a real growth in Europe so young people will have jobs. But you said the part of it, how much, I mean, is there, a, do you think that there's a clear promise? How much from this a lot of money will go to the European youth? Well, we have heard that some of it will go to young entrepreneurs and to creating the growth that will result in jobs for young people. But this far, I haven't heard the concrete numbers of how much. This is a problem, exactly, that we want to point here. That we don't know, we don't have a promise, a clear political promise, how much money the EU will invest from that. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not entirely sure, that a good part of this will go to the European youth. 
Oh, what do you think? Well, we are hoping for a huge price coming to European youth, for sure. Is, it a w is there a way to push or to, to try to engage the Commission in a more um, decisive approach towards the management of this fund, towards the European youth? I mean, is the European Youth Forum taking an action towards this direction to stress the importance that a big part of this goes to European youth? Of course, we are in a constant dialogue with the Commission on making youth a priority and tackling the huge youth unemployment in Europe. We are not lazy in this, we are there and we're having continuous dialogue on it. I know that you're not lazy at all, so don't worry about this. Um, let me continue with a, another question. Uh, it's quite extensive and it involves an interesting quote. Um, so, let me begin. I would like to refer to Mrs. Iliana Ivanova from the European Court of Auditors, who said at the end of March, and I quote her here, we have identified as potential risks the adequacy of the scheme's funding. I'm, I'm referring to a uh, youth guarantee scheme. Eh? The good quality nature of the offer it proposes to young jobless people and the way in which the Commission monitors and reports on the results of the scheme. Addressing these risks, she says, early is key for the effectiveness of the youth guarantee. She continues, unfortunately, it is rather too late to save the program. And my question after this very interesting excerpt would be, would you agree that it is too late to save youth guarantee program in Europe? Would you agree that it's too late to save the European unemployed youth? No, it's not too late. The European Youth Guarantee, it is a good, good scheme in making sure that no young person falls behind and it's something that needs to be continuously developed. We have not even seen it implemented in most of the EU countries yet. There are some plans and some of the plans are good, others have flaws, but there needs to be a real po political commitment in the implementation. Not only taking old programs and giving them a new name, but there needs to be investment and real implementation of these programs. We see, uh, for example, in Finland, we see a youth guarantee that has had some success and needs to be improved for sure. But I believe in this program and it is not too late to save it. Yes, but my question here is um, the fact that the European Court of Auditors judge the European Youth Guarantee insufficient in terms of the investment in details from the EU, in terms of the planning. This is what I read you right now. It really reveals that there's no good planning about it from the EU, that not the sufficient funds have not been devoted to this plan, and further that it has not been thoroughly planned and deployed. Uh, do you believe that uh, that it can really work? Maybe in some countries like Finland or some countries in the north of Europe, maybe we have some results. But you know very well, better than me, I guess, that youth unemployment is raging in the south of Europe. Do you see the youth guarantee scheme touching these people this, uh, at the end of the European, let's say, continent? I hope it will. I do acknowledge that there has not been enough funds uh, going into the youth guarantee and the planning is not done in a, in a good way. We as the European Youth Forum we have been pushing from the start and we are still pushing because you should not start the process and then shut it down two months in, into the process. We need to continue and we need to improve. There needs to be more funds and there needs to be a real implementation of the youth guarantee. This is clear. So you are trying to control a little bit and you advocate with the Commission on this topic and you think that you are able to show them the good way because apparently the European Court of Auditors say that they're in the bad direction right now. Yes, we are doing our best on this. Very good, Joanna. I hope uh, later on we can discuss after the interview more details about this. Um, let me continue now in another topic. Uh, it's not a secret that youth participation in the EU is very low. In last EU election last spring, only 28% of, of youth under 25 did cast their vote. What are the main reasons why the EU has failed to seriously engage its youth? What are the concrete strategic steps to bridge this gap, in your opinion? And how is the European Youth Forum contributing to this? 
we actually did a study uh, on the election results from 2009 that was very that were very similar. And what we found, why young people are not voting, is that youth issues are not enough on the political agenda. And with youth issues, I do not only mean topics where you include the, the word youth, but things that are relevant to our generation. And this is the biggest reason why young people do not want to vote. They do not feel that the questions that are important to them are on the political agenda. I mean, we already discussed youth unemployment, and there has not been a lot of things tackling this issue, and this is the reason. The second thing is that uh, also the political parties need to be more in innovative in their outreach uh, and in their ways of communi communicating with young people. This was also clear that it needs to be more approachable, so to say. Okay, so you're trying to make the agenda full of uh, youth topics, and uh, at the moment it's not, sadly, from what you admit. Um, all right. And now, a uh, very important one, obviously, and very relevant. Last March, the European Youth Forum launched the Employer's Guide to Quality Internships. This is truly an excellent initiative, in principle, from the European Youth Forum. But is it the remedy to bad quality internships in Europe, or just the stimulus for a change and a new beginning? What do you think is the right next step? Which strategic plan should the EU invest, most of all, uh, on to effectively incentivize European companies to be good quality employers towards their interns? Well, we launched Employers Guide together with employers and we developed it together with employers because we do believe that when we want to speak with employers, it's also, it's also important to have their perspective in it. And we are really trying there to outline what benefits it can be for both the young person but also the employers in having a quality internship. So this is uh, about the guide. About the next steps, uh, we do believe that there needs to be a legal framework also when it comes to internships. It's very important to make sure that there are no more unpaid internships in Europe where young people are exploited. But we also, we're trying to work both with, uh, with the political decision makers uh, and also with the employers in creating this. So do, do you believe that you can find a pattern where the European industry has a benefit from having good quality internships? Because at the end of the day, we find it that sometimes the European programs stop where there is not a market created and I'm referring to the initiative of Interns Grow Pro, that they tried actually with labeling to make an effective market, to make it interesting for the European industry and company to actually have a good level of internships. But without this, uh, I think that uh, it can be insufficient uh, to only think about a project without thinking also about how to deploy it. And this is the most important part, maybe. Absolutely. And this is also why we're here at the Business Summit, to share this with the businesses. Yeah, and what we, we really believe is having a good quality inter internship is something that is also very good for the employers. Because this means you will have a young, enthusiastic person coming into your company, maybe somebody that you can later hire. Uh, it's also something that brings a lot uh, when it comes to, to reputation. Having a quality internship is really something that is seen as, as very good amongst a lot of young persons, and it's something you speak about if you have a quality internship. No, it's a very interesting topic and uh, of course we follow this topic very much at the European thing and we are keen to see actually an action plan to deploy it, which is the most important. Um, now, uh, the last question for today uh, is uh, the following. What success story would you hope that the European Youth Forum will be able to present in a meet the experts meeting at European Business Summit 2016. What is your number one aspiration and hope for European youth this year, 2015 and 2016? Now I hope to present that there is a clear framework for quality internships, for sure. 50% of all young Europeans do an internship, so it is a crucial thing for young people. I want to come back here in one year and see that there is a framework for quality internships. Do you see this being uh, uh, voted at the European Parliament? I mean, how do you see an action on this one? I mean, this is very ambitious, obviously, very good what you say. But w w how do you see this uh, happening, actually? 
Well, there was a recommendation from the Commission last year, uh, and it was not as ambitious in the end as, as we expected, but something in the same same line that member states agree on having a framework for quality internships. This is what we see. Well, that's very ambitious and very positive. So at this point, I would like to thank you very much for your time and kindness and insightful ideas here for the betterment of European youth. And uh, I would like to thank you very much all. Uh, Panas Katsampanis from Brussels, live at European Business Summit 2015. Thank you all.